brothers, sisters, we are truly, truly, truly living in these end times. And Jesus had warned us of this. And I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to read Matthew 24 and 25 all the way up to Matthew 26. Especially because it does pertain to these last days. But before I do, I just want to emphasize the importance of getting your house in order. Both spiritually as well as physically. Literally. Like, um... God dwells in temples not made with human hands. And over and over and over, Jesus had warned us about uh, being deceived. False brethren, false prophets, false apostles, false teachers. He told us that there would be many people who would be claiming to come in his name and to not go seek after them. Uh, just from going through and scouring around on the internet you can go and find several people who claim to have the Holy Spirit and for the right amount of money they'll lay hands on you and fill your vessel full of oil now Jesus had uh, told us to come to him directly there is no intermediary between you and God outside of Jesus Christ and the only intermediary between you and Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit God dwells in temples not made with human hands. And Satan, Lucifer, wants to dwell in that temple. And you, brothers and sisters, are that temple. And given this push for this uh, tectopian nightmare that they want to give everybody, you know, left or right, it doesn't matter. Both sides are evil. You know, what would Jesus do? You know, are you, you going to try to pick between the lesser of two evils? It's a rigged game. It's like playing Russian roulette. I, I would dare to say that Jesus would not pick either side. And personally, I think that this is a, a test to see who it is what we serve. Are we going to put our faith in Christ? Are we going to put our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are we going to put our faith in the promises that Jesus had given us? Are we going to seek Christ? Or are we going to seek the things of this world? Is our faith in Christ or is our faith in men? You know, you have the left that are pushing to uh, abolish and destroy, right? And then you have uh, the right being uh, kind of forced or pushed into this confrontation they're, they're trying to start a civil war and Jesus warned us of these times not that, that so we should be afraid but that when we see these things come to pass that our faith might be full over and over and over Jesus had said do not be deceived brothers do not be deceived brethren the apostles warned the same thing do not be deceived there is only one gospel only one and that gospel has already been given and that gospel has truly gone out to the four corners it has gone out throughout the earth and what we are witnessing now is the beginning of the falling away in my opinion because as I go through and I read the scripture and I study the scripture for myself and in my own prayer closet so to speak the, the emphasis on getting ready and being prepared can't be uh, stated enough. We can see that they're literally allowing people to go through and you know you can go to strip clubs, you can go to bars, you can go to all these other places. You can go out and riot and congregate in huge groups, but you can't go and worship God. They want to close down churches, and in many places they already are. And then we have people who have fallen into this, uh, you know, Trump deception, because that's what it is. Left or right, it doesn't matter. They're both funded by the same people. They're both Kabbalist, New Age mysticism, and they want to destroy the old world, right? They want to get rid of uh, the old system so they can usher in their new antichrist kingdom. And we're talking about people who 
They, they sacrifice their own children. They sacrifice their own friends and family. You think that they won't do it to you? Or you think that they won't do it again? You know, all the neuro-linguistic programming and all, all the things that you can see in the flesh are showing that that's what they're pushing towards. This tectopian nightmare. Salvation through pharmacia. Salvation through the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. The lie from the very beginning that you can be just like God or that you are a little God. All of these heretical teachings are all being bound together. And we have people who are professing to be our brothers and sisters or professing to be modern day apostles and prophets telling you, ah, we have Christ. Come see us. We'll lead you to salvation. God speaks to us. Well, it's funny because, you know, when I, I went through and I read the gospel as it was given by the apostles, the kingdom of God is within all men, not one group of men or, you know, this man and not that man, but those who actually cry out to Christ. And then there's uh, different teachings when it comes to spiritual warfare. Just one I'll cover real quick. These uh, generational curses. And they'll go back into the Old Testament and they say, oh, we'll see, you know, right here it says that, you know, God, uh, he, he visits the iniquities upon the third and fourth generation. Well, if you keep reading, he says unto those who hate him, but those who love him, he doesn't put that curse on them. So, brothers, sisters, if you have given your heart to Jesus and you truly love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with everything that you have, how do you have a generational curse? Why do you need to go see someone or buy their book to break a curse off? The curse has already been broken. It was broken off the day that you submitted to Jesus Christ and allowed Christ into your life. Now let's go through and let's uh, let's read in chapter 24 of Matthew, and I'm going to start here at verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars, and see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. And we have seen all these things coming to pass already. Nation against nation, and all across the world, kingdoms divided against themselves. And all these are the beginnings of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We're seeing that right now too, aren't we? But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is in, in the house top come not down to take anything out of his house neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes in woe or sorrow unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days but pray ye that your flight not be in the winter neither on the sabbath day for then shall be great tribulation such as was not seen 
since the beginning of the world to this time no nor shall ever be and except those days shall be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened then if any man shall say unto you lo here is christ or there believe it not for there shall arise false prophets or false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. And then multiple times there, Jesus says, just right there has warned false Christ and false prophets. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as light as lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles, or the vultures, be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So that, that sign that appears in the heavens is the return of Christ. It says it right there in, in the full verse. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great authority, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, and from one end of heaven to the other. He shall gather his wheat into the barn now learn ye a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves you know that summer is nigh so likewise when ye shall see all these things know that it is near even at the door verily i say unto you this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as it was in the days of Noah, that Noah were, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days they were before the flood, they were eating in drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall the coming of the son of man be there shall be two in the field one shall be taken and the other left two women shall be grinding at the mill and one shall be taken and the other left watch ye therefore for ye do not know what hour your Lord doth come but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Give me meat in due season. Well, when Jesus had left, what was the commandment that he had given? What did he tell us to do? I strongly encourage you guys to go back through and read the book of John. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over his goods. But, and if the evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, 
and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he thinketh not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Listen to the answer that was given by the wise virgins. But the wise answered, saying, Not so least there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. Hmm. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went, with, uh, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward, came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and another he gave two, and to another one. To every man according to his several uh, his individual abilities, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them another five talents. And likewise he that received two, he also gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that received five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and I went, and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou ought therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take for there, therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him that hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. 
and cast ye that unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him he shall gather all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats he shall put on his left. Then shall the king say unto them that sit on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and we gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them that are on his left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not, sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then saith they also, answering unto him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as you had done not to one of the, these the least, ye did it not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. Love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with everything that you have. And love thy neighbor as thyself. Love as you have been loved. Forgive as you have been forgiven. And remember by the same measure in which you judge another, you will be also judged by that same standard. If you show no mercy and forgiveness to another, how can your Father in heaven show love and mercy and forgiveness unto you? The days and the times that we are in, if those don't match up with what Jesus Christ had preached and warned us about, I don't know what does especially when it comes to the revelation of Jesus Christ, we're literally seeing a time in which it's coming to where you won't be able to buy or sell. You'll be homeless. You'll be starving. You'll be hungry. And they're even pushing to have you thrown into prison or to even be sick. In the last days it said to try them which be on the earth. And after going through and reading the parable of the talents and those who sit on his left and those who sit on his right really really want to get that gospel on your heart. Seek Christ. Ask him to come into your heart. To seal your mind from the wickedness of this world. Take captive every thought. And strive to enter in at that narrow gate. Jesus never told us that being a Christian was going to be easy. 
Straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. And just as Jesus was there to help Peter when he hadn't started to sink into the water, so will Christ be there with you on your walk. And just as Jesus had stood with the three in the fire, so will he stand with you in these last days. For greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. If we be Christians, let the light of Christ shine through you. The way that we wage war in the spirit is foolishness to men. It makes no sense to them. Jesus said he was sending us out, out as sheep amongst wolves. And he didn't send us out to lose. He sent us out to be victorious. If it's one thing that this world truly needs right now, is it truly needs the meat. It needs the meat of the gospel. To all my brothers and sisters in the faith, especially those who are going out and putting miles on their, their boots, Godspeed, we need way more of you. And whatever you can do to try to preach the gospel of peace, whether it's giving the gospel to a neighbor, whether it's putting a, a video out, whether it's talking to someone while you're standing in line, with all long suffering, in considering thyself, have patience, mercy, and with love, rebuke brothers and sisters, especially if they be confessing to be a Christian. Encourage everyone to have a personal relationship with Christ through the Holy Spirit. To all my brothers and sisters in the faith, much love, God bless, and don't give up, don't give up, we're almost home.